26. Hurricanes, sea level rise, and our expanding footprint are taking a heavy toll on our coastlines. You might remember seeing this video here of a home falling into the Atlantic Ocean in the Outer Banks. It happened in May during a coastal storm. And good evening, everyone. I'm Wendy Ryan. We all know how dangerous our storms, especially hurricanes, are here in Florida. So the question we're asking now, how eroded are our beaches? And over time, will homes here be swept out to sea? In this full circle report, we sent ABC Action News reporter Michael Paluska to our beaches to investigate. From this vantage point, you can see just how bad our beach erosion issues are. We're here at Sunset Beach. It is critically eroded. This isn't even high tide. You can see all of these waves coming up all the way to the dunes. There's really nowhere for people to come out and enjoy this beach and sit. And you saw that dramatic video of that home in Rodanthe falling into the Atlantic Ocean. This is supposed to be all sand, but we have the same or worse beach erosion issues here in Florida as they do in the Outer Banks. the subtle lullaby of waves. Serenading our Florida beaches brings peace and joy to millions of tourists and locals every year. But the calm never lasts forever. One hurricane, tropical storm, or winter front can wash it all away taking our dunes and shorelines with it. They always say don't bring sand to the beach, but we do have to bring sand to the beach, right? <laughs> yes, we do. Dr. John Bishop is the Coastal Management Coordinator for Pinellas County Environmental Management. Bishop gave us a tour of the erosion at Pasigrill Beach. How does that happen? Is it sea level rise? Is it storms? It's, it's coastal erosion. Coastal erosion um, is influenced by storms and sea level rise, storms particularly, but you know, barrier islands also naturally move and, and, and have their own changes that they do. But this erosion here was due to storms. And it doesn't have to be a major hurricane. Hurricane Ada downgraded to a tropical storm when it hit our area, eroded 15 feet of dunes at Sunset Beach. Pasigrill hit hard too. We'd be in a dune right now. Yeah, yeah, this dune used to be covering that, that walk over. Every storm leaves a mark. St. Augustine Beach 2019, I watched firsthand erosion in action as waves from Hurricane Dorian pummeled the beach, sucking the sand out to sea. What's the story behind that video of a house washing into the ocean in North Carolina? Our national partner, Newsy, investigated the collapse of this home in Rodanthe on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Just a few short decades ago, where I'm walking, you would have seen swimming pools here and the beach extended all the way out to the middle point of that pier. Their team found parts of the Outer Banks can lose 15 feet of shore each year. Rodanthe considered an erosion hotspot. All the red in this map of Florida are critically eroded beaches. Zoom closer and we have similar erosion or worse than Rodanthe, Honeymoon Island, Treasure Island, and Passage Key, to name a few. Depending on the tides, our coasts and barrier islands do expand and contract over time. It is a natural process, but development impacts those flows, and human-caused pollution is adding another major problem to the mix. For people that are still skeptical, your research does show you that in Florida, a state that's a peninsula surrounded by water, we're going to be affected by sea level rise. Mm -hmm. We've already seen it. There's no doubt. We've already seen it. The data is, uh, the data is incontrovertible. Gary Mitchum is the Associate Dean of the USF College of Marine Science and a sea level rise expert. Our climate models tell us that we expect it's gonna increase by another foot in the next 30 years. So when you add that foot onto a spring tide, then onto a relatively small storm that has a two or three foot storm surge, all of a sudden you've got six or eight feet. Could there be homes on St. Pete Beach that aren't livable anymore? I don't know about not livable, but um, probably you're gonna have to start thinking about adaptations. 
Adapting and restoring our beaches will take a lot of time and sand. For Pasigrill Beach, it will take 140,000 cubic yards of sand. That translates to 11,666 dump trucks full. That is just one beach. And according to recent data by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, out of 825 miles of coastline surveyed, more than half, 426 miles, are critically eroded. The report says all of Manatee County is from Anna Maria Island south. And a 4.7 mile segment along Kennedy Space Center is too, threatening manned spacecraft facilities, launch pads, and buried infrastructure. You see these people behind you, they are an invaluable resource, the tourists that come in yeah. here. Could you even imagine a Pinellas County without a beautiful beach? No, you know, the tourists bring in billions of dollars every year to just the Pinellas County alone. So I think that more than pays for the few millions it takes to, to nourish the beach. It isn't just tourism dollars. Endangered sea turtles desperately need sand to nest along with seasonal shorebirds. The dunes so important to our natural world protect animals and us, barriers to wind and storm surge. This is one of the more extreme examples on Treasure Island. That's where high tide was and then boom, the water's right here. That's way too close for comfort. They want to be on the beach, they don't want to end up in the Gulf. Are we seeing anything similar to what is happening in the Carolinas with our coastal erosion? I wouldn't say to that extent. There are structures that are getting very close to the water. Um, there's a couple in Sunset Beach and Treasure Island where there's like a little bit of a patio sticking out to the dune, but not to the extent where we're talking about homes falling into the, the Gulf. Right, we're, we're not at that point yet. No, we're not at that point. In Pinellas County with photojournalist Reed Moeller, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News.